Selecting the voltage for your solar system, whether it's 12V, 24V or 48V, boils down to two key factors, efficiency and cost. Keep watching because I will discuss advantages and disadvantages you might not have considered. And for those particularly interested in RV systems, you will find my recommendations later in this video, as RV setups have their own unique requirements. Let me share a real life example. A client of mine had a 2000 watt inverter connected to a 12 volt system. He was initially set on keeping this 2000 watt 12 volt inverter, but I advised him to switch to a 24 volt system. This change brought multiple advantages, including reduced wire cost, increased system efficiency, and reduced the cost of the charge controller. Let's first dive into my recommendations for pairing inverter sizes with the appropriate battery voltage. While these suggestions might initially seem surprising, I will explain the reasoning behind them. For 12V systems, I recommend inverters up to 1000 watts. For 24V systems, go up to 2kW. And for 48V systems, you can consider inverters up to 5kW. You might wonder why there's a specific limit for each inverter size. The key factor here is the current. These inverter sizes keep the current under 100 amps, which gives us many benefits, which I will discuss next. Let's talk about wire costs, which are crucial to your system's overall expense. You might come across a 12V 3000W inverter on the market, but that doesn't mean it's a good purchase. Here's why. A 12 volt 3000 watt inverter draws 250 amps. Then, multiplied by a safety factor of 125%, we become 312 amps. For such a setup, you would need a 2 odd gauge copper welding wire, which would cost you $114. However, if you opt for a system with a higher voltage, say 48 volts, your wire requirements and costs decrease significantly. Let's do the calculation for a 3000 watt inverter on a 48 volt system. You would need a 6 gauge wire, which will cost you $36. This can cut your wire cost by nearly 75%. Just because you can purchase a 12 volt 3000 watt inverter doesn't mean you should. I made a video about this topic, so for a more in depth explanation, watch that video after this one. Another significant aspect to consider is the cost of the charge controller, which varies based on your system's voltage. Let's take a scenario where you have 1000 watts of solar power. For a 12 volt system, you would require a 70 amp charge controller. This type of controller could cost around $382. If you use the same 1000 watt of solar power with a 48 volt battery, your charge controller current would drop to just 20 amps significantly reducing the cost to approximately $90. I've discussed this topic in my book, called Off-Grid Solar Power Simplified, highlighting how increased battery voltage can lead to a cheaper charge controller. An additional advantage of opting for a higher voltage system is increased energy conversion efficiency. Systems with an MPPT and inverters are more efficient at higher voltages, this is because they don't have to work as hard to boost the voltage to or from 12V. The closer alignment between the solar panel's voltage, inverter AC output, and the battery bank voltage enhances overall efficiency. For instance, a 12V Victron inverter operates at a maximum efficiency of 93%, while a 48V inverter can reach up to 96% efficiency. Stick with me because I will discuss the disadvantages of increasing the voltage soon. Voltage sag occurs when you draw too much current from a small battery. This drop in voltage is due to the battery's internal resistance and occurs more in batteries with higher internal resistance like lead acid. The inverter can shut down when the voltage drops because it has reached the low voltage cutoff. Higher voltage systems draw less current and will reduce the voltage sag. Another method is ensuring the battery is correctly sized according to the C-rate. A 12V 100A lithium battery has a C-rate of 1 and can draw 100A. 
A 12V 100Ah LED acid battery has a C rate of 0.2, which should only draw 20 amps. Check my video about C rate for more details. Let's address a common misconception about batteries and voltage. Some may think that increasing battery voltage results in decreased power. However, this isn't the case. To illustrate, let's compare the power capacity of different batteries. Four 12V 100Ah batteries hold the same energy as two 24V 100Ah batteries and one 48V 100Ah server rack. Essentially, all these batteries have equivalent energy capacity. If we arrange these batteries in a series configuration to reach 48 volts, the maximum current that can be drawn from these batteries is 100 amps. It's best to limit the amount of batteries in series for balancing purposes. Choose a 48 volt server rack and place more of them in parallel to increase its current delivery. While the advantages of higher voltage systems in solar power are numerous, it's also important to consider the potential disadvantages. The first drawback concerns system with 12V loads. If your setup includes devices that run on 12V, like lights and a pump, but you have a 24V or 48V battery, you will require a 12V converter. These converters are typically around 90% efficient. But they are essential to ensure your 12V appliances can function correctly with higher voltage systems. The second disadvantage is more relevant to RV solar systems. To mitigate shading effects on solar panels, it's recommended to wire them in parallel. But for effective charging, the combined voltage of the panels should exceed the battery voltage by at least 5 volts. In a parallel setup, achieving this voltage can be challenging. Therefore, for a 24 volt battery, you may need to wire two solar panels in series first, and then connect them in parallel to surpass the required 24 volts. Another aspect to consider is safety with 48 volt systems. Higher voltages can pose a risk of electric shock, so caution is needed when installing or maintaining these systems. There is less risk with 24 volt or 12 volt systems. As we transition to discussing recommendations for RV systems, I would love to hear from you. Have you faced any challenges with your current solar setup? Share your experiences or questions in the comments below. Your insights and questions is what fuels the making of these videos. As we come near the end of the video, let's focus on recommendations for RV solar systems. I recommend using inverters up to 1500 watts if opting for a 12V setup. This size is sufficient for most RV applications, providing enough power for typical appliances and devices used in an RV setting. If you have a slightly larger inverter requirement, a 24V system can be effective, supporting inverter sizes up to 3000 watts. I generally do not recommend 48V systems for RVs if you plan to charge the system through an alternator. This is because there are currently no DC to DC converters available that can convert from a standard 12V alternator to a 48V battery system. Hence, sticking with 12V or 24V systems is more practical for RV installations. Before people hurry to the comment section, there are ways of wiring the starter battery to a boost converter and then to a 48V charge controller with a relay connected to your ignition. However, this is an advanced method. You might notice that the recommended inverter power is slightly higher. This is to accommodate for the fact that most RV appliances operate on 12 volts. With a 1500 watt inverter in a 12 volt system, you can run appliances like a microwave or kettle. Additionally, since RVs don't have large solar arrays, the potential savings on charge controllers are diminished in RV context. Learn something from the video. Please give it a like, subscribe and check out these videos next.